Good morning, me neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you, Lord, for another day. Good morning, me neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful it's another beautiful day I had to get up and pray and say thank you Lord For another day Every day I open my eyes I see morning light, morning light I know that the Lord just brought me through the night Through the night So I face a challenging day Before he take me away behind to the grind Success on me This wonderful morning It's another beautiful day I had to get up and pray and say thank you Lord For another morning and a blessed morning to you my brothers and sisters in Christ and welcome to another edition of morning prayer brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Belize. Today is the 27th day of February. It's a beautiful Monday morning. It's still a bit gray outside but it's a beautiful day this morning indeed. There are birds singing. The wind is a bit strong but it's just you know what still it's welcoming and inviting and especially if it's blowing through your room window well, let me tell you, it was a challenge for me to get up and walk the dogs this morning. But once I was outside, I was glad to be there and blessed to be alive. It is the penultimate day of the month of February. And by tomorrow, just like that, two months would have gone by. Easy squeezy, just like that. We're going to kick things off this beautiful, beautiful Monday morning with one entitled, In Christ There Is No East or West. Let's have a listen.
lovely indeed in Christ meets both east and west in him, meets south and north. All Christly souls are one in him throughout the whole wide world. I like that one a lot indeed. We're going to continue then with getting our words here up on the screen for February 27th in 2023. And let me see if I can get that done here in three, two, and one. There we go. There we go. Jesus said, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Words from Mark chapter 8, verse 34. Using versicle 1 on page 35. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Our invitatory prayer. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of our goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Our first canticle for this morning is the Canticle de Venite, which is based on Psalm 95, verses 1 through to 8. And if you are following along in your books of common prayer, we are on page 36. O oh, come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his and he made it. His hands molded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he himself is our God. We are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. If only you would hear his voice today, for he comes, he comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness, and the peoples with his truth. At this time, we pause to call to mind those things that in thought word or deed we may have committed, things that might have been displeasing to Almighty God, Things that might have been unjust to our neighbors, or things that might have been unkind even to our very selves. For these times and these moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Together we pray, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life, which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Up next, we have the reading of our Psalms, and our Psalms appointed for this morning are Psalms 63, verses 1 to 8, and then Psalm 98. Let's have a listen. Psalm 63, verses 1 to 8. O God, you are my God. Eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you, my flesh faints for you, as in a barrier, barren and dry land, where there is no water. Therefore, I have gazed upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and your glory. For your loving kindness is better than life itself. My lips shall give you praise. So will I bless you as long as I live and lift my hands in your name. My soul is content as with marrow and fatness and my mouth praises your name with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed, 
and meditate on you in the night watches. For you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. My soul clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. Psalm 98 Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. With his right hand and his holy arm, he has won for himself the victory. The Lord has made known his victory. His righteousness has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He remembers his mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn. Shout with joy before the King, your Lord. Let the sea make a noise and all that is in it, the land and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord when he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world and the peoples with his equity. Our second canticle for this morning is the Canticle de Benedictus, which is based on Luke chapter 1, verse 68 through to 79. If you are following along in your books of common prayer, we are on page 40. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets, you promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our forebearers, and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Up next, we have the reading of our Bible lesson, and our reading comes from the New Testament book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17 through to 31. Let's have a listen. A reading from the Word of God, written in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 17 through to 31. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its power. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. And the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God 
the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those who are the call, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to reduce to nothing things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of our life in Christ Jesus. He became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption in order that as it is written, let the one who boast, boast in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you allow me a couple of uh, seconds here to get back to the beginning of the reading, my computer is acting up just a little bit and I'm not sure why it's doing what it's doing. But you know what? As with all things, we trust that God will make all things well. We are looking at the reading from, there it is finally, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17, 2 to 31. And the truth of the matter is that in some, some churches, especially in the church in Europe, Today is celebrated as the feast or the commemoration of George Herbert. And George Herbert, who was born in 1593, mm -hmm, that's how long, was the cousin of the Earl of Pembroke at that time. And his mother was a friend of the poet John Donne. And he, of course, had gone to Trinity College, Cambridge, and was a public orator. Yes, and um, the the... The attention of King James the first, you know, the King James who they transcribed the Bible into English for. He, because of his famous letter writings in Latin and in English and his books that he would give to the University of Trinity College Library, caught the attention of, of King James, who granted him an allowance and seemed to have made him an ambassador at the time. Now, the king in 1625 died and George Herbert, who had originally gone to college with the intention of becoming a priest, yes, got it in his head to then um, begin to seek a new ordination. And he became a vicar, yes, and then rector of, the par of a parish um, in Salisbury. And from there, he led faithfully morning and evening prayer in the church, encouraging his congregation. But he also got into writing yes he got into writing and his chief book is a book of poems called the temple and of course his writing was all religious based but more than that he had a heart and a passion for his for his people yes there is a story where on one occasion he was late to come to church to lead worship because he had met a man whose horse had fallen under the weight of a heavy load and instead of just passing the man by, he stopped, took off his coat and helped the man unload the horse to get the horse back on its feet and then reloaded the carriage. And of course, his spontaneous generosity and goodwill won him affection with not only his parishioners, but with the people around him. And so this George Herbert, who was a priest all the way back in 1590, how much did I tell you? But it would have been in 1626, somewhere around there. He became famous in his tongue because he was going outside of what was expected of him as the vicar 
and the pastor of that parish. At that time, of course, like some priests like to feel every now and again, um, priests were considered holier than holy. And the story of the Good Samaritan comes to mind, where the priests and the Levi, who were spiritual men, would have passed the Samaritan on the road on their way to where they were going. Now, the belief is that they would have passed because the man was a Samaritan and they didn't want to help. But that's not true. The, scribe, the priest and the Levite that passed the man on a Sabbath day going to worship could not touch this man because this man would have been undefiled. This man would have made them undefiled. This man would have been unclean and had they touched this beaten up Samaritan man, they would not have been able to go and do their job. Now, fast forward a thousand and something years later, and here is another priest, George Herbert, who, seeing the dirty work of a fallen animal, yes, disregarded the fact that he was on his way to church, disregarded the fact that he would have been smelly like a horse, and he just assisted where human need existed. And the reading that we heard this morning from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17 through to 31 is an interesting reading because Paul, of course, having proclaimed himself to be called an apostle of Christ, was trying to get the same message across. Paul was telling the people of his time, don't worry about division because foolishness is what division is. Do not, and this, of course, this portion of reading comes because there was talk of baptism in verse 11 through to 13. Yes, and the division was who had baptized who or who was baptized by who. And what was happening is that looking to see who had baptized who was the people's way of saying, well, I am more Christian than you because I was baptized by Paul or I was baptized by Peter. And it was all a matter of prestige and living up to titles at that point in time. And just like George Herbert who didn't care that he was a priest, but it was more important for him to be able to assist the people. And in, in the story of George Herbert helping the man, he doesn't even say that the man was a parishioner or somebody he knew. It was just somebody who was in a difficult position and he decided he needed to help. And Paul was, was saying something similar. Stop worrying about who was baptized by who. Yeah? Stop worrying about I am of Paul, I am of Paulus, or I am of Cephas, or I am of Christ. Because Christ is not divided. Yes? Christ is not divided. And there is no difference between who we are. And Paul was, was grateful. Yes? Paul was grateful for the fact that, you know what? Christ did not send me to baptize anybody, but to proclaim the gospel. And to proclaim the gospel in such a way that I don't even have to use eloquent words the truth of the matter is paul says that the word of god is foolishness to those who are perishing and it's interesting because he's saying that to a people who is supposed to be coming to the faith in christ to be saved by christ's cross and by his teaching paul declared the idea that the cross could be made of no effect if it were presented with the wisdom of words. If it was all about head knowledge and not about heart knowledge, then it's foolishness. The same way George Herbert's ministry, if it was all about prestige and not about reaching the people, it would be foolishness. The truth is, to those who reject the salvation that is won for us through the Christ, to the cross of Christ, the idea of being saved through the work of a crucified man is, is rubbish and those who do not believe consider it rubbish because there is a lack of faith yes and the words message of cross sounds kind of noble and religious yes to the 21st century years but in the first century saying the message of the cross was saying something similar to the message of the electric chair because remember the cross was a cruel humiliating unrelenting instrument of death that's it. And the cross was reserved for the worst of the worst of the worst. And to say that a cross that was assigned for criminals, a cross that was assigned to bring shame to the criminal and the criminal family could be the saving of the whole world, that was utter nonsense to somebody living at the time of execution or death through the cross. No wonder it was foolishness. 
to those who were perishing around in that time. For us, the, the, the message of the cross is salvation because we have been taught by Paul and those in the generations before us that it was through this death on the cross, even though it was a vile thing, that salvation came because the Son of God died on it. And can you see the difference in perspective? And it is similar to the Good Samaritan perspective. When you look at the Good Samaritan and you see the priest and the Levite pass, you're always angry with the priest and the Levite, thinking how could they just pass and leave the man on the road? But look at it from their perspective. They would have been unclean and unable to go and lead worship the way they were supposed to lead worship. And I'm not saying that what they did is right, but they had to make a difficult choice. And at the end of the day, that is what Paul was telling the people in Corinth. You have to make a difficult choice. Your difficult choice is you have to decide whether the instrument of death is simply something that is shameful or something that is glorious because it has won everlasting life. And the truth is, the choice for those who choose to follow cross, Christ and his cross is never going to be an easy one. Is it about wisdom for you? Is it about prestige? And Paul says, we are the scribes, we are the debaters of this age. And he reminds them that God has made foolish the wisdom of the world. And he goes on to tell them, stop being divided by things. Stop being divided by who is smarter than who. Stop being divided by who was baptized by who. Stop being divided by whether you are Jew or Greek. Remember that the power of God and the wisdom of God is foolishness. And wisdom comes from a knowledge of God. Because, and I like verse 25, God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. And I think I just find my next favorite quotation, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 25. God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. And that is the truth. Because the choice is to trust in God or to trust in the things of the world. But when you consider that the things of the world that humans consider wise is far worse than the foolishness of God. When you consider that the things that humans revel in and boast of in terms of their wisdom and their strength and their might is still nothing in comparison to that which God possesses. I don't know about you, but I will choose God. And I will choose him time and time and again because to choose the things of the world means to forfeit the glories of God's kingdom. <laughs> and that, that I will not to do. Hmm? And I love how Paul puts it. God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God used Balaam's donkey to prophesy in the old testament and i loved when jesus was told on what was the first palm sunday tell the people keep quiet they are making too much noise and jesus says to the leaders of the time if the mouth and every tongue would cease the rocks and stones themselves would cry out because you know why one everything is meant to proclaim the glory of god and two the glory of god cannot be contained if every tongue in silence creation will still worship god <laughs> it's a beautiful message the message of the cross but it is foolishness to those who are who are perishing those who are perishing and are not saved, it is nonsense to them. And the wisdom of the world that so many hold on to versus the wisdom of God, there is no comparison. And I'm not trying to say that one should not strive, yes? I'm not trying to say that one should not strive to gain knowledge because one should strive to gain knowledge. The practice of the art of using the knowledge of medical science to save lives is important. Yeah? The exercise of wisdom, but recognizing it is a gift from God in whatever particular area of study that one is engaged in, is a wise thing and a beautiful thing if that wisdom and knowledge is used for the glorification of God and the good of his people. But the pinnacle of wisdom itself 
is not how much we can learn, but how much we seek to understand the ways of God. That's it. And why? Hmm? And I love how verse 28 through to verse 30 puts it. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to reduce to nothing things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. Because God is the source of our life in Christ Jesus, who became for us the wisdom of God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. That is who God is. And that became clear, yes? That became clear for Paul. And he was trying to get it across to his people. That became clear in the 1600s for George Herbert. And my question is, is it clear for us? Are we aware of whose side we are on? Are we aware of whether we are walking on the side of the wisdom of the world or we are walking on the side of the wisdom of God? Are we aware that the choice between seeing the cross as a means of torture and not a means of saving grace exists before us? Let me tell you. The choice exists. At the end of the day, knowledge, wisdom, title, possession, ranks, nothing is important. If we must boast of anything in our lives, let us boast in the Lord. Let us boast of what he has done, what he is doing, and what we in faith know he will continue to do. Boast in the cross of Christ our Savior. That even though the ways and the things of the cross might be foolishness to those who are perishing. To us who believe, it is a means of eternal life. What is your choice? In what will you boast? I choose to boast in the Lord. Every time. Amen. <laughs> Let us continue then, brothers and sisters, to boast of our faith in Jesus Christ through the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. As our Savior has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen for our suffrages this morning we use suffrage a on page 43 lord reveal your love among us that we may know the joy of your salvation grant peace within and among all nations and teach our leaders wisdom endow your church with faithfulness and her servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us and through us your will may be done. 
Our first call it for today is the call it for the first Sunday in Lent. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Together we say a prayer for families. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who places solitary persons in families, we commend to your continual care the homes in which your people dwell. Put far from them, we beseech you, every root of bitterness, the desire of vainglory and the pride of life. Fill them with faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, and godliness. Knit together in constant affection those who, in marriage, have been made one flesh. Turn the hearts of parents to the children and the hearts of children to the parents. And so enkindle fervent charity among us all, that we may evermore be kindly one to another. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, we turn to our prayers of personal intercessions and thanksgiving. This morning, we would like to extend birthday greetings to the following individuals. Celebrating a birthday yesterday was Miss Kellyanne Powell, and celebrating a birthday today is Miss Cecilia Flores, Miss Sharifa Richards, and Miss Abbas Williams. We pray, ladies, that you will have a blessed and beautiful birthday, and that indeed God's blessings continue to be upon you, not just for today, but for all the remaining days of your lives. Happy birthday! In our prayers, we continue to give Almighty God thanks for persons who have recovered from illness and surgery, and we continue to pray for healing and recovery for the following individuals. We remember in our prayers, Miss Judith, Miss Eileen, Miss Pauline, Miss Rose, Miss Grace, Miss Celine, Miss Maria, Miss Norma, Miss Mary, and Miss Joyce. We continue to pray for Miss Monica, Miss Sylvia, Miss Des, Miss Aislin, Miss Justine, Miss Lisa, Miss Soila, Miss Beryl, Miss Janet, and Miss Kim. We remember and pray for Miss Margaret, Miss Myrna, Miss Janice, Miss Dylan, Miss Alma, Miss Marlene, Miss Crystal, Miss Amelia, Miss Venancia, Miss Derla, Miss Betty, Miss Marta, Miss Marva, Miss Gloria, Miss Celestina, Miss Jessica, Miss Lashan, Miss Althea, Miss Teresa, Miss Molly, Miss Agnes, Miss Lena, Miss Loretta, Miss Barbara, Miss Ruby, Miss Arlette, Miss Yolanda, Miss Janice, Miss Glenda, Miss Amy, Miss Jean, Miss Myrtle, Miss Geraldine, Miss Doreen, Miss Delvereen, Miss Elma, Miss Alma, Miss Mona, and Miss Priscilla. This morning we say a special prayer for Miss Maud Williams, who had a small accident at home over the weekend. We continue to pray for her, her healing and recovery as well as for those who care for her. In our prayers, we continue to pray for Miss Verilyn, Miss Carol, Miss Jasmine, Miss Alaire, Miss Nina, Miss Leonor, Miss Gladys, Miss Robin, Miss Elena, Miss Louise, Miss Rita, Miss Lisa T, Miss Uliche, Miss Joan, Miss Isme, Miss Anne, Miss Fiona, Miss Catherine, Miss Kelia, Miss Vedina, Reverend Ilona, Miss Sharon, Miss Elva, Reverend Linda, Miss Carolyn, Miss Gretel, Miss Sandra, Miss Bernadine, Miss Brenda G, Miss Tanisha, Miss Dominique, Miss Nadia, Miss Sheila, Miss Pat, Miss Michelle, Miss Sophie, Miss Jean, Miss Brenda S, Miss Perla, Michelle Martin, and Miss Zindi. In our prayers, 
We continue to pray for the following of our brothers. We remember and pray for Mr. Zane, Mr. Larry, Mr. Kenrick, Mr. Wilfred, Mr. Marvin, Mr. Philip, Father Eric, Mr. Jeffrey, Mr. Tony, Bishop Nicasio, and Mr. Gustavo. We pray for Mr. Lloyd, Mr. Ian, Mr. Edmundo, Mr. Charles, Mr. Dion, Mr. Freddie, Mr. Oscar, Mr. Costa, Mr. Finley, Mr. Rudolph, Mr. Dudley, Mr. Rupert, Mr. Enrique, Mr. Robert, Mr. Rodney, Mr. Ishmael, Father Jervis, Mr. Walter, Mr. Edgar Jr., Mr. Belhem, and Mr. Antoine. I believe Mr. Antoine is also celebrating a birthday either today or tomorrow. We want to wish him a happy birthday. We remember and pray for Mr. Leroy Jr., Mr. Dion, Mr. Alfred, Mr. Ian, Mr. Michael Griffith, Mr. Michael Samuels, Mr. Michael Soberanis, Mr. Clinton, Mr. Lewis, Mr. Carlos, Mr. Irvin. We pray for Mr. Leroy Jr., Mr. Russell. We pray for Father Leroy, Mr. Kurt, Mr. Gilbert, Mr. Lindon, Mr. Mark, Mr. Emmett, Mr. Brindell, Mr. Gary, Mr. Sean, and Mr. Grayson. For those who fear that there is none who care for them, we pray for those individuals. In our prayers, we continue to pray for comfort for those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. We remember and pray for the families of Mr. Wing So, the family of Mr. Hendy Kotkoi, the family of Miss Julia Keane, the family of Mr. Jerry Nonen Kemp, the family of Bishop Robert Thompson, the family of Miss Geraldine Westby, the family of Miss Olive Thompson. We continue to pray that God will grant those who are bereaved comfort and healing during this time of mourning and we pray for eternal rest for those who have died in our prayers we pray for protection over our loved ones who are far away from us we continue to remember and pray for our students praying for Tammy, Anwar, Karina, Courtney, Akua, Randall, Ashley, Ria, Kai, Elton, Arian, Angel, Garrett, and Rihanna. We pray for our loved ones in the military, praying for Emil, Jedi, Candy, Prince, Jason, Gavin, Charles, Alvin, Barry, Sam, and Keisha. We continue to pray for the protection and enablement of all medical professionals in the performance of their duties. We pray for all our lab technicians, our pharmacists, our nurses, especially Nurse McKinn, Nurse Gill, Nurse Herrera, Nurse Orell, Nurse Cherie, Nurse Joyce Lynn, Nurse Alberta, Nurse Ira, Nurse Alejandra, Nurse Olivia, Nurse Julie, and Nurse Ashley. We pray for all those in our pharmacists. We pray for all those in administrative positions. We pray for all our cleaners, our security, and adlis. We pray for our cooks, and we say a special prayer for our doctors. Praying especially for Drs. Molina, Manzanero, Arnold, Shogreen, Ariaga, Ken, Arana, Joseph, Eck, Lawrence, Sosa, and Koyar. In our prayers, we continue to pray for persons who have contracted COVID-19. Praying for their healing. Praying for those in the isolation wards and those who care for persons in the isolation wards. We continue to give God thanks for the availability of a cure. And we continue to pray for the containment and eventual elimination of this COVID-19. In our prayers, we continue to pray for the combating of the economic fallout caused by this pandemic. For persons who are struggling financially to make ends meet, for the, state, the current state of our economy, and for God to provide new ways of generating income for all who are struggling at this time. We continue to remember the most vulnerable in our society, Praying for the poor, the needy, the elderly, persons with pre-existing health conditions, persons with mental health challenges, persons with who are facing uh, situations of abuse or bullying and violence. For all those in the society who might seem to be easy to take advantage of, pray for God's protection and provision over them. We continue to pray for our security forces, for the BDF, for the police force, for the Coast Guard. We continue to pray for our government, for the Governor General, for the Prime Minister, the leader of the opposition, all our political parties and political leaders, 
a la public servants, especially those who traverse the road to get to work. For all persons in positions of public trust and authority, for our ambassadors, we pray for our churches and our church leadership. We pray for the private sector, for all non-governmental organizations and all who are involved in the fight against COVID-19 or in any form of humanitarian aid. We continue to remember and pray for the members of the international community, those most severely affected by this pandemic, those affected by the ravages of war and civil unrest, those affected by the ravages of natural disaster. Praying for God's protection and provision of even as we pray for protection over ourselves and our nature. For the prayers of our hearts that our tongues cannot confess, we pray that Almighty God would hear our prayers. We conclude our intercessions by praying together a prayer for protection. Together we pray. Almighty and eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments that under your protection now and ever we may be preserved in body and soul through jesus christ our lord amen By means of announcement, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you so much for joining me for morning prayer this morning. It is indeed a blessing and a privilege to be able to greet each new day in your presence as well as in the presence of Almighty God. Outside my window, the morning has broken, the dawn is beyond us now, and there's an orange glow uh -huh, outside. It is a beautiful day. I pray that this is a wonderful day where you are as well. I want to thank those of you who joined us for our online service yesterday, as well as thank the online ministry and the online music team for leading us in our worship yesterday. Mm -hmm. I want to remind you of what our service schedule is for this week. For, well, for today. Following this broadcast, we have noonday prayers at midday, evening prayer at 5.30 and compline at 9 p.m. The close of the day. Please know that we appreciate and we greatly, we are very thankful and grateful for your continued support of the work and the ministry of the Anglican Diocese of Belize, both our in-person ministry and our online ministry as well. We're going to wrap things up this morning with our prayer of dedication, followed by the grace, the dismissal, and then our final hymn. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our parts, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and to serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to close off with one this morning entitled, O Thou Who Camest From Above. And guess what? He who came from above did not come to show partiality. For in him there is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, wise or unwise, except in him there is those who come to a choice to be a part of his kingdom or not. I do pray you have a blessed and beautiful day. Please do all you can to keep yourself and your family safe. Until tomorrow morning, same place, same time. God bless and bye for now.
Good morning, me neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you, Lord, for another day. Good morning, me neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful it's another beautiful day I had to get up and pray and say thank you Lord For another day Every day I open my eyes I see morning light, morning light I know that the Lord just brought me through the night Through the night So I face a challenging day Before he take me away behind to the grind Success on me Another beautiful day I had to get up and pray and say thank you